it's Melissa and I'm kind of nervous right now like my heart is racing a little bit because I can't see you guys and normally I can see my phone at the same time that we're doing this but Austin is actually recording tonight and we are gonna walk through me taking a bunch of pictures so if you guys have followed me for a while you know I always batch my pictures so I take a ton at one time and that is what we're going to do tonight and I'm going to show you how I set up everything. If you guys have questions, please ask them as we go because Austin will be able to read those comments to me and we can go through your questions. Does everything look good? Can you see the, the timer going? Okay, cool. He's nodding. You guys can't hear him, but he's there. So I have a few projects here and then, um, yeah, I'll show you guys exactly how we're going to take it. I haven't set up anything yet. So some of this you're going to see me like fiddling and fidgeting this stuff around and getting it set up. But first things first, I don't know how much you guys can see, but we are in our front room. So I want to show you guys a couple things about this room and why I like to take pictures in here. So to my left, we have these big, beautiful windows and these let in a lot of light. Now one problem, and again, I'm not sure how much of this you guys can see. Austin looks like he's being really artistic with the camera, which I really appreciate. So thanks. Um, I'm not sure how much of this you guys can see, but there's a really, really big tree outside, which has a lot of leaves. Okay, now it's like National Geographic. <laughs> We're going rogue tonight, I swear. So this tree um, kind of gets in the way. So it makes this room a little bit dark. So right now it's actually a lot darker in here than I would normally shoot. But since this is where I take most of my pictures, I thought it would make sense to show you guys. The other thing I wanted to mention is since the tree is like fully leafed out right now, the sun shines through it and it makes all of our beautiful gray walls kind of like green tinted. So normally if my pictures have a little bit of a green tint, I'll fix that afterwards in Photoshop um, or Lightroom, which is what I normally edit in and then um, go from there. But it's still really bright, still really beautiful and I love everything in this room because I have a lot of space and I can kind of figure things out shoot the way I want to and I usually like the result. One other thing I want to show you guys is we have our front door over here. This is so weird. I'm just, I feel like I'm on a TV show or something. Any comments or anything that we've missed? No one, no one said hi or anything? There's a lot of people saying hi. Okay, cool. So um, obviously this is our front door and I want you guys to see what happens when I open it. So if you guys have like shades, or um, like curtains, or if you have a door like this, open up everything you've got and let, let in every ounce of light that you can, especially if it's like toward the end of the day, like right now, this will make a huge difference. So even just like watch my face, and we have this like rug here, which I'll actually be moving um, when I shoot pictures right here, but I want you guys to see the huge difference that this door will make. So I don't want any of these little like spots like you see on my dress here, but overall it just brings in like such a beautiful glow and even natural light, which is, is exactly what we want. Also, I just realized I've been holding this crochet hook the whole time. Don't know why, but I'll be using this in pictures, so that'll work out. Um, one other trick, which I'm gonna try, I don't know how much, um, difference it'll make tonight but I'm gonna try it if you guys saw my live last week I talked about my reflector and how much I love my reflector um, you can get them for like 20 bucks on Amazon if that so if we were shooting pictures of me what we'd be doing is Austin would use my camera so if you ever see a picture where I'm in it Austin takes those pictures for me I know I'm super lucky I'm super spoiled that he helps me out in that way but we'll use the reflector for that, so to make sure that like my face and all of me is well lit. But right now, I'm just gonna see what happens if I take this out and, and put it on the floor. So what I'm hoping happens is the light will come in, bounce a little bit up, and it'll just create a little bit more ambient light. Because right now, I don't know how much of it you guys can see, but it is kind of dark in here, and that's not ideal, but you gotta do what you gotta do. So we'll just lay this down kind of over by the door, um, let it pick up some extra light and hopefully that'll help out as we start taking pictures. So now it's time to start laying out projects and figure out how I'm gonna take these pictures because I really have no idea. So <laughs> here we go. Um, the first project I actually have is 
my pebble cardi and as you guys can see it's really just like a mess like truly so this is the body of it and it's all um seamed up but i haven't actually like sewed in the ends yet oh i actually had a needle in it which is not smart you should always put your needles in a safe place we have a question oh tell me i always want to get the best natural light this is from jso D debt crochet um i Always want to get the best natural light. However, I have awnings on every window and I feel sometimes they get in the way. Any advice on what time of day or how to work around the awnings? That's definitely super tough. Um, it's just like that tree I was talking about outside where like it's blocking your best light and that's really rude of it. But I would try and move toward maybe like a door wall or even just like look at any window in your entire house. Like we have a really small stairwell, which I'm not gonna show you guys today, but it's cramped, but it has this beautiful window that comes in and lets in great light because that window is not in the way of any trees. Um, otherwise, like you can fake photos outside too. If you have like a nice shady area, you can just lay down like a blanket and do pictures outside. But those awnings, I definitely feel your pain because this tree is not in my way in the winter and it's like the best. And then I love seeing spring come along, but it totally blocks the light. Um, but otherwise, like even like right now, it's darker in here than I'd like, but it's, I mean, it's still an even pretty decent light, so I should be okay. So since this is kind of a mess um, and I just had this needle that fell out, what I'm doing is I'm actually just putting the needle on a loose end and I have this sleeve which is not even attached. Um, but I'm just gonna kind of like fold it around and we'll see what happens. Normally, on a normal month, I take anywhere between like 500 and like a thousand pictures for my Instagram and I normally use 30 of them. So that kind of gives you an idea. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Don't be afraid if you don't like something, just go for it. And then you can always decide later if you want to actually use that picture or not. So I don't even know. This looks like a mess. I might not use these. We'll see. If you see this picture on my Instagram, it's going to turn out better than it looks right now. But sometimes that happens. Sometimes pictures grow on you. So I don't know. I set up the needle. Here's the sleeve laying on a partly finished cardigan. We'll see what happens. One other thing I love to do is, right now you can kind of see shadows forming because it's not super bright out. The window is like, I mean, it's pretty good light, but I'm gonna make it better. So I'm gonna use this poster board and put it right here. So what this is gonna do is reflect the light from the window and kind of reduce some of the shadows that I was seeing before. Can you tell a difference on your end? You can kind of see. Austin's nodding, so I think you can see. But I'll do it again, so. Yeah, so that's the big dramatic effect is when you change from. Oh, you can see it? Yep, from okay, right cool. there. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention is every single picture I take, I take in a portrait orientation. So landscape is like a horizontal picture and I always take them in like portrait because when you're on Instagram, um, I want my picture to take as much space in your feet as possible when you see it. I don't want like a landscape picture that then looks smaller and then you scroll past. I wanna take up as much space in your feed that I can. So I always shoot them in portrait mode and that's just a personal preference. It also works a lot better on my blog. But when I'm shooting a pattern or something that I know will be on Etsy, I make sure I have really good horizontal pictures too because Etsy thumbnails are always horizontal. Just something to think about. Um, but again, I prefer portrait for everything. So here we go. I'll take a couple and we'll see what this ends up looking like as I get tangled in this strap. It's getting like super creative again. This is a lot harder to do when I'm like on an Instagram live. I feel a lot of pressure and you guys can't even see how the picture is turning out. Okay, so I honestly, if I'm gonna be honest, I, I don't like it. Maybe I'll like it later, but 
kind of over it. And that's okay, because then I'm gonna try something else. And usually that's how a lot of like my best pictures I feel like happen, is I just get stuff out and start moving it around until I like it. So what I'm going to try instead is actually move towards our front door where I showed you guys a couple minutes ago, because I think the lighting will be a little bit better and more flattering. And I like grays and I like creams in my feet all the time, because then if I need to add in a color or something else, it makes it really easy to do. But we also have wood floor, so right now I'm just going to use the wood floor. Ten what? minutes. Oh, okay. <laughs> I told Austin, I was like, I have a goal, maybe we can make this under 30 minutes. And he was like, that's a really long time. So we'll see what we can do. I don't like this rug, it's really old. It's from Ikea, and I've never been a fan, but that's where it lives. So I just move that out of the way. And we will try the same thing over here. Okay, so I hope you guys can see um, the lighting over here is magical. Looks a million times better because the tree that I was talking about isn't blocking it here. Um, so let's see if I can set up what I had before. I know some people too do like the prettiest flat lays where they have like a coffee cup and like just so much fun stuff. I've tried that and I found I'm not the best at it. So I leave that to those people and I find to me the more simple a picture is, the more I like it. Um, so do whatever works for you. Like if you wanna get fancy, go for it. But if you find that you start to overcomplicate it and then you don't like it, then just do something else. So Hickory Lane Handmade. Oh, hi, Lisa. Hi, Lisa. <laughs> do, do you ever find a glare with your hardwood floors? I can't shoot on mine because they're too shiny. Well, in the live video, it looks like there's a little bit of glare from the floors, but trust me in person, it's a, it's a pretty dull, uh, dull glare, so. Yeah, I think it depends too, not to get into like the nitty gritty, but, um... When we bought this house, it's like a hundred year old house and we redid all the floors when we moved in. So we actually have like a water, what is it? A water base? Uh, what, uh, Instead of like oil. So it's actually a lot less shiny than like oil um, finished floors. So when they put like the sealant on them, it is a little bit more dull, I think. But I think that helps. Our neighbor's mowing the lawn if you guys hear it. I think he just made eye contact with me too. Okay, that looked way better. Still not sure if I'm gonna use it, but I'll show you guys what it looks like. If you can see it, it's just something super simple. I also like to have a lot of um, white space in my feed, so I like to have pictures that are just like light and bright, and this will be a really good picture um, for that. So I'm gonna get rid of this guy and show you guys something else. Here's the famous hexagon shelves. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I like to mix up, like if I have, um, if I'm at a loss and I don't know what to post, I always just use this empty one at the bottom and put in some kind of different yarn. And then that's kind of like an easy post where I don't have to think about it, but I can't overuse it. I've probably only posted that like five times over like a year and a half. So this blanket is from Pottery Barn, I'm not gonna lie. No one handmade it, but I absolutely love it. And it makes a really neutral, pretty background. I used to try and use that poster board for background, but it's just like too boring. And it actually has a little bit of a shine to it, which I do not like. Um, so, okay, I'll just lay out the blanket and I'm gonna grab a project. Bees crocheting says honeycomb shelves. Yeah. Okay, so I just grabbed um, my flat iron shawl, obviously. No, I'm just kidding. You can't even tell what it is, but my flat iron shawl. Um, this pattern is actually not one of mine. It's from Tony from Teal Yarn Crafts. You should definitely get it because it is so beautiful. Um, so I'm just going to kind of lay this out, and I've already taken pictures like this, but I haven't made a lot of progress on this shawl. 
So to make it a little bit more interesting, I am going to add in this other skein into the picture, which will be my next color. I don't know if this happens to you guys, but when I have yarn that's like in a cake, it always starts to become like messy. I'm just watching the neighbor mow their lawn, if you guys can hear it. <laughs> okay, and I don't really, I always tuck the labels in the middle, but I don't really need this label in there anymore, so I'm just gonna take that out. Hooks and Tangle says, yes, I use poster board, but I find it gets damaged, and then you see all the dents and wrinkles in your photo backgrounds. Yeah, like, <laughs> this piece of poster board has been through some stuff. Okay, where did I put the camera? Okay. All right. So, let's see. And since I like everything, like, portrait, I'm going to try and make this picture, like, probably like this big. So I'll crop it like that. And these are legit pictures that I need for my Instagram. Oh, thank you. Austin's holding the poster board for me, which is like super awesome. Oh my gosh. What is he? What Chopping is he? a tree down with the mower. What is he mowing? Oh my gosh, that's so funny. Okay. So that's pretty boring and plain, but I'm gonna try one more thing here. Sometimes I just like to like fold a project because I think it's more interesting. I don't know, maybe I'm making this up. No, I don't like that. I just wish I had ended on this corner because I think I would like the picture a little better. But oh well, let's just. Someone says they have skein coats for my yarn cakes that they make. What? Skein coats for the yarn cakes. Oh, that's cool. I'm sorry if that was really loud. I just kind of yelled into the camera. <laughs> okay. J so J so day is how it's pronounced. Crochet. Oh. J so day also ask. Will you show like how this. to do non flat lays? I have a small home decor and I try to do a lot of shelf photos. Oh, that's cool. I mean, shelf photos, I don't get too creative with um, just because I can't move the shelves, obviously. Your hair is really in the way. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> All right. So these um, kind of look exactly like other pictures I've taken of this shawl. And I think until I add this other color, I don't know if I'm going to be super thrilled. But I'm going to try one more thing, and then I'll be done with this one. See, now that's more interesting. Sometimes, honestly, a nice texture picture, like if you can just get a really pretty close-up picture of something, that can also be a really nice picture for your feed. You sound like you're just going to say something. Detroit Knot says, crying, we like her hair, Austin. <laughs> oh my gosh. See, I told you Natalie would be on here. Because I was telling Austin, I was like, you have to read me people's names so I know who it is. And I was like, like if it was Detroit Nuts, you'd have to tell me so I knew it was Natalie. And that's so funny that, that happened. So that's what those pictures look like. I think those are my favorite ones of the bunch I just took. Just something, again, like so simple. Never, ever underestimate a simple picture. And also never feel like you have nothing to post because I've posted this shawl multiple times. I've posted these yarns, but whatever. I still like them. I'm still working on it. So it kind of like tells the story of how your project is coming along. I have one more thing to set up and I'm actually going to use the same spot right here because it's the best light that we have right now, I think. Yeah. Okay. One more. What you doing? The camera. Uh -huh. <laughs> so 
So we got these sheets in the mail today from Target because I actually needed uh, new sheets. And I was like, oh, I kind of like this color. And I'm actually gonna try and use them as like a background for some more pictures. And these, I guess now that I think about it, to answer the other question a little bit better, um, most of these are flat lays. The other pictures I take are where like I'm in them or my hands are in them, which we can probably show you a couple of those um, right when I finish these. Hooks and Tangles says Melissa's hair is like hair goals. Oh. Honestly. You guys are way too nice. Uh, this is a fitted sheet. Like, it's all wrinkly. I don't know. Nor's Knits. Um, which, sh can you share which camera lens and setting you're using? Yeah, so um, if you guys saw my last Instagram live or the blog post, um, I linked all the camera stuff that I use. Today I'm using um, my 35 millimeter lens, which I almost always use. And my camera um, is a Nikon D3100. All right, these are pretty wrinkly because I just got them and they haven't been washed, obviously. But I'm gonna see what I can do. So I haven't even posted this guy yet, um, but I'm really excited about it. I posted the yarn. This is like Main Street Yarns, and it is seriously just like so nice to work with. And this is one skein. Anyway, I'll post more about it once I start working on this, or once I start like showing more of the pattern and whatnot. But where did I leave off that? So sometimes, um, like right now, I ended at the end of the row here, which is, you know, what a lot of knitters and crocheters do. And normally, if I um, am taking pictures, I'll like crochet over a little bit just because I think it looks more interesting. So I'm actually going to rip out some of this and then put the hook in and try and pick like a less wrinkly spot of this sheet. Beast Crocheting says, ooh, what's that, Melissa? This is gonna be a baby blanket. I'm super excited. Um, All right, now we're dexterously gonna... made. That comes over here. Oh, thanks. Sorry. Thank you. Dexterously made says how do you upload photos taken to instagram when they're taken from a non-phone camera um so i actually shoot all my pictures in raw which means that i have to edit them um in something like adobe lightroom which is what i use so i actually upload all of them to my computer and then i call them which basically means i go through and pick the ones that i'm going to use so i flag all the pictures i like and then i edit all of them i export them then I use um, a different software to resize all of them, like in a batch, which you can also do in Lightroom. And then I, um, I actually just plug my phone in my computer and just drop them in a file or like in a folder on my phone. And then, yeah, it's like a process. But I know that sounds like a lot, but just keep in mind, I do this like once every one to two weeks. Like I do all my pictures at one time and then they're done and they're on my phone and they're ready to go. So keep that in mind. Some of the newer um, DSLR cameras, you can actually sync with your phone. Um, I wouldn't do that even if I could just because of the way I edit them and I like to edit them like. You edit them twice too. Yeah, I had like touched them up one final time in Instagram, but it's like very minimal. It's just to like maybe brighten it a tiny bit or something. Oh, okay. These are interesting. I really want this to be like wrinkly looking. I'm always in awe when people do this and make it look good. I never know how, but I'm gonna try. Like I like when things have folds in them. Oh, yeah. Okay, I like this way better. 
I might even do some without the crochet hook because this hook is very stark looking. Contrasting. Yeah, it's very... Naughty Crush says the yarn looks super soft. It is. It's so nice. Beast Crocheting asks, is that a waffle stitch? No, it's actually not. I'll have everything in the pattern when I post it, but um, it's like one of my favorite stitches, but I've never actually used it in a pattern. One other thing when I'm doing this, um, you guys can probably see these wrinkles right here, but I'm just gonna crop them out later. But when I do these pictures, I try to do some really close up, so like this much in the picture, and then I'll do some from like up here, and I'll show you guys what those both look like in one second. So just a quick difference, actually I don't like this picture at all, but you get the idea. So there's one, and then the other, just can again, you, like, what? Can you go back? Okay, perfect. <laughs> so um, I'll do some like without the hook. I think these are gonna be the ones that I actually go with. I like the way it looks a lot. I'm gonna tuck in this yarn tail. Make sure my hair is not in it. And then if I'm really going to be a perfectionist, I'm going to do some of this too. Sorry. <laughs> the important thing is that it doesn't get in the picture. That's, that's the goal. What's up, Tony? Oh, it's Tony. Hi. She missed when I was showing the flat iron shawl. Mm -hmm. That was a couple minutes ago. Um, so if I'm going to do pictures and I don't have Austin to help me, but I want to make it look like I'm um, doing something, I don't know why, but I like to see people's hands in pictures. This is the end of the skein, so it's like not pretty looking at all. But... I will literally just like sit down and put my hand there and this is where it gets really complicated because DSLR cameras are not easy to do this with but I have to have a very like particular grip on my camera just do the wrist strap for safety and then I'll do something like this. Oh, my arm is like shaking. Cool, so that's just something different. Um, whatever you do, I feel like there's ways that you can modify your pictures in the space that you're working in to make it look a little bit more creative and different than it actually is like i just use this same like two square feet in my house for all these pictures and just using like sheets or blankets or whatever you can really make your feed look a lot more diverse than it actually is um, if you guys are anything like me or like my house i have favorite spots and i'm not gonna like spend hours trying to take pictures if I know that like this is my favorite spot right now with the way my light is. Like I tried the other one at the beginning of this video and it just wasn't working. So I found something better and then I'm just gonna work with this space and get the most out of it that I can. Um, now again, if Austin wasn't filming right now, what I would have him do is usually like stand behind me and take pictures and maybe get some of like my lap in here or like pull a blanket up on me and then take pictures with just my hands in them. And then also one other thing I like to do is um, that corner of the couch that we started on, I like to sit there and then Austin will stand over here in the corner and we'll get pictures of like me crocheting or like smiling mm -hmm. <laughs> at the camera. It sounds really boring, but I feel like it's really important that you are in your feed. Um, I know it's weird, but people like to see your face. And then if you're saying something to them, it makes sense if they're seeing the face who's talking to them. 
even if it's like a still picture. Um, so that's pretty much what I wanted to show you guys. Nothing super fancy. I feel like I probably take pictures like a lot of other people. But if you guys have comments or questions, this is like the perfect time to add them in. Okay, so we have uh, JSO Day Crochet. What do you recommend for phone settings? That's all I use for photos. Also have HDR that's always on and I'm not sure what that is. It seems the same when I turn it off. I actually never really use my phone for pictures in my feed. I think the biggest thing um, isn't quite your phone settings. I would just leave it in normal settings. HDR I think just makes it a little bit more um, contrasted and like sharper in my opinion. I don't know exactly what it does, but when I flip it on and off, that's kind of what it looks like. Um, but what's more important than your phone settings is just finding places with good light and take the same project around your house in like three or four different spots, set it up and figure out where the light is coming in most evenly and what is gonna flatter your project the best. And if you can't see that right away, just take the pictures and look at the pictures and see which ones look best. Just like the ones I started with, I was like, eh, I love that spot, but right now the way the light is in our house and the sun setting, it's just not, not super great. So more so than your settings, just focus on the lighting and the spot you're taking pictures in. Uh, North. Nora's Knits, how do you keep a balance between your feed being diverse but also consistent? Because I've heard consistency is key for people to recognize your brand. Um, so when I say diverse, I don't mean that I want all different pictures and all different styles. No matter what, um, it's going to be my style. I always edit a very similar way. I always take very bright pictures in natural light. And most of my projects are pretty neutral. Um... So in that way, definitely have consistency. When I say diverse and adding in like a variety of content, I just don't wanna post the same project 99 times in a row because I think that's really boring. So that's why I always make sure I have two or three different projects all at the same time. Even though you've already seen my flat iron shawl, I can rotate in a couple more pictures and it'll be okay. So just trying to use different spots and things, but your editing, your lighting, all of those things should be a very similar um, feel to them. So for me, Austin's telling me to wrap it up. He's telling me I'm rambling, <laughs> but basically you wouldn't see me posting like a bright red project with like super dark backgrounds or dark editing because, okay, he's like giving me a sign. So like one more minute of questions, I guess. He's like, we're done. I t we're going to go for a run after this. And if I don't go soon, I'm just going to like sit on the couch and crochet for the rest of the night. So we're at 33 minutes. Oh, 33. You did three zero. 33. Oh, he did 33. Okay. Are there any more questions? No more questions? Mm -mm. Okay. Well, I hope that this was helpful for you guys. I know that I'm always super curious and love to see like how other people set up their stuff. It's always changing um, as people get different projects and new equipment and like all different things. But this is pretty much what I've done for like the entirety of my Instagram life. And the majority of what it is is just great spots with good lighting. And from there, you should be good to go. So I hope that that was helpful for you guys. And I will not see you next week. Um, but next month in June, I'll have a whole different plan for Instagram lives. So I'll talk more about that soon. Thanks for coming.